Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is September 19th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. So for this segment, I want to talk about two scientists that are speaking out on critical issues to global civilization and, and to the environment at this time as it relates to human-caused climate change. And that would be Dr. Michael Mann and Dr. Jennifer Francis. And the reason why I want to talk about them is because usually after a big event happens, you, you tend to get a lot of loud noise in the climate change denial media um, trying to downplay climate change impacts on storm events and also attacking the, the voices that are highlighting climate change issues that amplified these events and that made them worse than they already are. And two of the leaders, two, two of the people who are, are leading voices on this issue are Dr. Michael Mann and Dr. Jennifer Francis. And for, in the case of Dr. Michael Mann, we've seen a lot of attacks ongoing, and I'm sure we'll see some as it relates to Jennifer Francis. Now, before I go into some discussion about these attacks and and how we can help support the scientists. What I'd like to do is is just reiterate some of the science related to what made Florence worse, in particular, what helped Florence persist for so long over the U.S. East Coast. And in a word, that is upper level blocking patterns in the jet stream and weak steering currents over the U.S. East Coast. Right now, the picture that I'm looking at is a sea surface temperature anomaly map for the Atlantic Ocean. And the reason why we're looking at the sea surface temperature anomaly map is because ocean temperatures have an influence on the atmosphere. And in particular, this cool pool south of Greenland related to Greenland melt which is creating a, a freshwater pool at the surface and reducing sea surface temperatures in this region due to this melt and a, what is an effect called the freshwater lens effect, which cools sea surface temperatures in regions where freshwater moves over the surface and, and generates a, a bit of, of downwelling and sequestration of heat in, in the ocean and cooling at the ocean surface has an effect on the jet stream in that it tends to generate a dip in the jet stream in this region near Greenland and to the east of Greenland. And it also tends to back up the Gulf Stream, which tends to generate ridge patterns in the jet stream over eastern North America and strong high pressure systems off the U.S. East Coast, in particular off the Northeast Coast. And these high pressure systems like the one we saw as Florence approach the U.S. East Coast can tend to steer storms into the U.S. East Coast, as well as the effect of the jet stream moving to the north reduces the steering currents, which helps to allow storms to stall and produce rainfall effects day after day, as we saw with Florence. Now, as Dr. Michael Mann and Dr. Gen Jennifer Francis noted, both Florence and Harvey as well as Hurricane Sandy, exhibited effects related to atmospheric blocking patterns that either altered their course or enabled them to persist for long periods of time. And because these blocking patterns are influenced by changes in ocean temperature that are set off by human-caused climate change, we can add these effects to climate change related fingerprints. Now it's worth noting that overall, as Dr. Francis and Michael Mann both point out, that sea ice losses in the Arctic overall have a systemic impact, a synoptic impact on the jet stream by enhancing both ridge and trough patterns. And we've seen ridge and trough patterns come into play during the summer of 2018 in relation to a number of extreme weather events, such as extreme heat waves and extreme rainfall events. 
And Dr. Michael Mann's research, as well as Dr. Jennifer Francis's research, has pointed to an increasing prevalence of these kinds of impacts, in particular during Northern Hemisphere summer, as some of Dr. Michael Mann's research has pointed out. I just like to note a couple of, of publications and media appearances of Dr. Michael Mann and Dr. Jennifer Francis. One at the Real News by Dr. Jennifer Francis talking about how global warming and Arctic sea ice melt have affected hurricanes. An excellent video blog by the Real News. I encourage you to watch it. I will link to it. And Dr. M Michael Mann recently published this article in The Guardian entitled Hurricane Florence is a Climate Change Triple Threat, talking about how human-caused climate change increases flooding from hurricanes due to sea level rise, increases hurricane intensity due to ocean warming, and can increase rainfall impacts due to a number of factors. i just also like to point out that the Dr. Michael Mann has noted that he has presently been attacked by the Daily Caller, GOP USA, and the Washington Times, uh, playfully noting that clearly he's doing something right, to which I wholeheartedly agree, saying, uh, you know you're doing right when the climate change denial media comes in force against you. So I'd just like to point this out, that, that we have expert climate communicators in the media right now, and they are a, a counterforce to climate change denial media, which is trying to convince you that, oh, these, these hurricanes are just weather and climate change has no effect on hurricanes. And, and this message by the climate change denial media is a false mes message. Human-caused climate change does impact hurricanes and has resulted in increased harm from hurricanes due to various amplified effects, as Dr. Michael Mann and Dr. Jennifer Francis note. So I encourage you to support Dr. Michael Mann and Dr. Jennifer Francis, to follow Dr. Michael Mann on Twitter, and to debunk attacks against climate scientists in the media and to speak out against them. Thank you for joining me, and I will be chatting with you soon.